Call the meeting to order the Whateley Select Board on March 31st, 2021. First order of business is approval of the meeting minutes of March 10th, 2021. Any comments on the minutes? Um, I move to approve the minutes from March 10th. Second. Okay, roll call vote. Joyce? Aye. Jonathan? Yep. Fred? Yes. Okay, vendor and payroll warrants. We all saw them, a summary of them in our information packet. Any comments? I have no comments, thanks. No. No. Okay, moving, moving on. Public comments, anybody? From the public or anybody here have anything to comments uh, on anything other than items listed on the agenda? No, okay. Moving on to our scheduled appointments. It looks like we're gonna be on time for Lynn and uh, 6.05. Uh, Lynn is our treasurer collector and town clerk wanted to discuss uh, the elections on June 8th, uh, Town Hall Historic Rehabilitation Project and location at annual town meeting. Okay. Right. Then. Um, with the pandemic still going on, I was hoping you might approve uh, using the town hall again for elections this year. I don't um, quite feel comfortable moving them back to town offices at this point. Uh, where we, at town hall, we have a nice flow that keeps people separated. Um, I think people are kind of used to going there. Uh, so I was just looking for approval for that. And also uh, in recent legislation, they ha are allowing um, early voting by mail again for annual, for town elections. Um, and they also are, are allowing early voting in person. Um, because of our, because of early voting by mail, I'm not quite sure that it would be terribly beneficial to have early voting in person. Um, our turnout generally is pretty, um, light for a municipal election, especially a municipal election that at this point has no races to it. Um, however, I, if the select board feels strongly about holding early voting in person, that would be, I would just recommend that it only be during um, the regular hours of the town clerk. Um, if we held it without, you know, extended hours, like we do with the um, uh, state elections. And then the, um, I yeah. guess that's it for the, the actual town election on June 8th. Do we have a choice as to, for the early voting, the hours, if we do that? Yes, you do. For a municipal election, you do. You have to have it, it has to start 10 days before the election. So it would be the Friday, <coughs> It would actually start, let me look at my calendar, on May 28th and run through June 4th. That's for early voting, you said, Lynn? Yes, in person, yeah. Yeah. No, we haven't done that for, did we do it for town elections last year? No, it wasn't an option last year. It wasn't, okay. Mm -hmm. I, I think we should encourage it to everyone's comfort and, and uh, make it as easy as possible for people to do if, if that's the way they choose to vote. Yeah. Um, last year, we also did something about uh, mailing ballots out. Is that something that's allowed again this year or, um, or something we should consider? Well, we, we will have early voting by mail. People will need to apply as they did last year. Last year, we were able to put in an application in the scoop, but I'm not sure when the next scoop will go out mm. and um, applications need to be to me four business days before the election. So mm. 
Um, well, it's mid-May. Mid-May is the usual time for the scoop. So the timing might work okay. Um, well, they'd have Mike. to get them to me, yeah, by June 2nd. Mm -hmm. so. so if they were in mailboxes, like the 15th, 16th, 17th of May, they'd have two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, well, we can take a look at it. And, and okay. that was an easy thing to do last year. But there's there's an expense to, to mail it. You have to mail it out to every every voter in town. Well, last time what we did was just put it's not we don't have to send out an application. That's not a requirement. Um, but last year, the timing was such that we were able to put a copy of an application in with the scoop. So it was going to, the scoop was going to be mailed anyway. So there was no real expense there. However, I think people did find it extremely easy. We had a very high turnout for our municipal election last year, or a very high request for ballots for our municipal election. The, the expense is when um, I get a request, I mail out a ballot, and then people realize that there really wasn't anything of you know, it, there were no races on the ballot, so they didn't return it. Um, so mm -hmm. that that was the expensive part of it, being uh, having to mail them out and then having no ballot returned to me. So, okay, well, because it was so easy, the application process was so easy that people just sent in the applications. Um, but the expense was of not having them return them. So, okay. But so that's something to consider if we do want to put an application in the scoop or not. Okay. Do we have to decide on the on the June eighth is a is a voting day? Uh, well, June eighth is our scheduled election. Oh, it's scheduled elections. Okay, so there's no there's no. They, uh, I'm not asking for any change. Yeah. Okay. Um, we do have the option to change. Um, I think you can have your election. I think the new legislation is to August 31st. Um, but because we we ran elections during COVID with big presidential elections and we, we did it safely, and I'm not sure that there's really a reason to postpone the election. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Well, could I make a motion then? Well, we're not changing the date, so... What do we could, I make a, could I make a motion then that we approve the use of the town hall for the election on June 8th as scheduled? I would second that. Okay. Uh, we'll call for Joyce. Aye. Jonathan? Yep. Fred? Yes. Okay. okay. And the other item, uh, Lynn, you had was uh, town hall project. Well, the, we it's time to pay off our last bond for the uh, our last note for the town hall project. So we didn't have enough to totally pay it off without refinancing again. So I went out for another note um, in for one hundred and fifty nine thousand dollars. That's what we're well, we're actually one fifty nine um, for another year for the town hall project. Um, and the I went out to bid in the interest rate is 0.4%. So it's oh. very low. Yeah. Um, let's, let's keep the 43,000. <laughs> so yeah, it's, um, the thing is uh, this, it's going to be getting really low pretty soon. If, if they keep putting 43,000, it would almost, uh, I'm hoping and encouraging that if the CPA has enough money to just pay it off next time, I, that would be great. Um, but so I'm looking, what I need is a vote from the select board to approve that borrowing um, for $159,294 for one year for 0.40% in the bid came from Greenfield Cooperative Bank. Okay. Can I ask a quick question? Mm -hmm. The number I hear you say is 159,000 and something, yep. but the number that's in 
the piece that I'm reading here says 154,294. No, it's 159. Okay, so that's a typo in here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so do I <laughs> Second. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? Okay. Roll call vote. Joyce? Aye. Jonathan? Yep. Fred? Yes. Okay. So the other thing I have to ask is if you folks can come by tomorrow and sign these uh, note documents because I need to get them back to our uh, financial advisor so we can proceed. And you need a signature by when? Um, tomorrow would be great if you can. So. Oh, okay. Uh, will they be uh, out tonight after this meeting is done? I can put them out. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That would probably be good for me. Okay. Yeah. I'll have them ready for you. I'll put them out tonight. Great. Thanks. Okay. okay. And then the last thing I think Brian we kind of wanted to throw out dates or or have a discussion regarding the annual town meeting. Yeah, I just wanted to have this discussion while Lynn was here. So if she wanted to not stick around for later, then she wouldn't have to. Um, but as you know, the, the board voted to postpone the date of the annual town meeting. And we were, um, we were thinking that um, the target date that we would have is June 15th um, okay. with rain dates up. Uh, the 22nd and the 29th. Okay, that's a Tuesday. Yeah, yeah. They're... Fine by me. I think those are the dates we were discussing the first time, aiming for mid-June uh, so that we could, um, aiming at that for that mid-June so that like all the, the budget and all the things that have to be uh, done ahead of time would be done for that. And yeah. then having the others for rain dates. I think this is completely what we had talked about before back in, I don't know, January, February, whenever we talked about that. So I'm completely fine with this. Okay. As far as location, we can decide that as we get closer. We can. I, I mean, I, I think my preliminary thought is it, it worked pretty well last year. I don't know what COVID's going to be like. I don't know how the vaccines are going to roll out. Um, we didn't get too much. We didn't get too many. I don't know if we got any complaints about, about the outdoor town meeting. So, I mean, I would think that maybe we would do that one more year, but I don't know if anybody else has any other thoughts on that. The only thing, let's see, last year the, the school was not in session, right? I, I mean, they weren't, they weren't open. And if this year, if they're open, is that going to make a difference? Other than we're there in the evening, not during the day, but. I think it's the school same. is over by then, but I'm not sure. Julie, it's, it's the same as it would be if, if, you know, it's always open when we have a regular time meeting in the gym. So I don't think that matters. Well, okay. Yeah, I mean, we might want to make sure that the they have the custodian on staff to clean restrooms after or things like that, but. Um, oh, well, I, yeah, and there may be certain um protocols that we should check in with Chrissy on in terms of using facilities I right. know for for right. sports being played outside of the school day um, she has been agreeable to leaving the door to the directly that goes to the kindergarten because before you get to the classrooms there are restrooms there um, that she may be willing to let people use as needed um, but that's a conversation that we should definitely have with her Yep. Yeah, it would not be the main entrance. It would be that door, you know, to the to the to the to the road side of, of the building. OK, so we well, can... yeah. OK, I'm sorry. Do, do we have to do that tonight or we're just approving the date? tonight? No, right? I'm just saying I'm just bringing it up as something okay. we should get that off. That's all. Yeah, I just wanted to be pretty much certain. I still need to talk to the moderator. I don't know if the moderator is listening. Um, <laughs> But I mean, we're, that's what we were thinking. Um, that's what we were thinking as, as a date. So um, okay. I'll reach out to him and we'll finalize that. And uh, then we'll come back to the board for a, an official vote. But that's what we'll plan on doing. 
Okay, so we're all in agreement. We'll we'll try for a, a June or well, June fifteenth is for annual town meeting. All right. Okay. okay. Yep. Do we need okay. a vote on that or? I don't. I don't think so. Do we? Um, well, we will need a we'll, we will need a vote to, to set the date. Um, I guess if we vote today for the fifteenth, and I check with the moderator, and he says he can't do it, then we'll vote for a different day. Okay, well, I, I'll make a motion that we have hold the annual town meeting on June fifteenth. Second. I'll second that. Okay, we'll call a vote. Joyce. Hi. Jonathan. Yep. Fred. Yes. Okay. Okay, Lynn, anything else? Nope, that's it. Okay, thank you. Oh, okay, thank you. Okay, moving on agenda. Uh, next item is uh, Fire Chief uh, John Hannum wants to talk about a Berkshire gas, uh, off gas methane project that they're considering here in town. John? Well, Fred, they're not considering it. This is going to happen. They're going to happen. Okay. Yeah, they're taking the plan out of service for the summer to do repairs and modifications. And the fire department has been requested to, st to staff an engine company, which means an engine and four people, four firefighters, for the time that they're, they need to uh, shut that operation down. And specifically, they, need to, they are going to burn off all the gas that's left in the tanks. And they say that this operation is going to take about 48 hours. And they're going to start on Tuesday morning, uh, May 4th. And during daylight hours, they'll burn and be done on Friday. That's their goal. Um, so the reason for me being here, if you have any questions, I'm pretty dumb about some things, but I'll try to answer those about the operation that they burn up, burn for burning up that uh, excess gas. Um, but I'm here to ask that this, the board sets a detail rate for my fire engines to be there and for firefighters, which we don't, to the best of my knowledge, we don't have any at this time. They cover the cost, right, John, eventually? Uh, well, yeah. It's, it's, it's where they, yeah. they yeah. yes. How, John, how did you come up with these costs? Explain what, how you figured them out. The numbers in the sky. Oh, the, the the hourly rate for the for the firefighters is double time their rate essentially. Okay. And an engine company is uh, you know somewhere in a hundred and fifty or two hundred dollars an hour. That that's what they uh, that's the going rate. And, this okay. is and these seven. would be what like eight hours a day, or is it continuous? Uh, no, we're we're starting at seven o'clock in the morning for our safety meeting, and they'll light the fire by eight o'clock in the morning, and they're going to burn it till dusk. Well, and May, the first week in May is maybe eight o'clock at night or after. Okay. So that's one day. So then everybody's going home and next day you're starting again? Yep. Okay, so your truck won't be there overnight then? Well, not unless they start a brush fire outside, unless there's another emergency. No, we're going home at the end of the day. And I will, I will try to work out, be flexible with the guys that I get to work if they can work a half a shift, a whole shift, 12, 10 hours, I, you know, I will do my best to fill these in, engine company details. Okay. And do you need foam in the trucks to fight if anything happens? What's that? Do you need to have foam in the truck? There, there, there's foam there. Oh, there you have foam in your uh, trucks. There, there's foam on the truck and there's foam on the, on the plant, at the plant. Oh, okay. I didn't, I don't know that. So if that's, um, I, I don't expect any problem with the, the, uh, methane if they're, I, I don't know. I don't know what to expect, but there is foam. There's a hundred gallons of foam at the plant that is all set up to go. And I mean, maybe, the, maybe this tower thing will fall down or something. I don't know. I the, not a clue what could happen, but they, they want an engine company there and they're willing to pay for it. Okay. Have you notified adjoining towns in case you need backup? Not yet. I will. Okay. Okay. I'll either, either, I'll notify uh, the Whaley Police, uh, Shelburne Control, uh, Pan Am Railroad, uh, South Deerfield Fire, South Deerfield Police, uh, Department of Conservation, uh, DCR, the 
the state fire marshals off the, uh, not state fire marshals, uh, uh, what are, oh, the, the uh, fire control tower and Massachusetts State Police is a list of, that I have that I will notify. Okay. So, John, we also talked about doing the, the reverse 911 call to, to the resident. Right. right. So will there be any noise or, or odor coming from this? Probably noise, probably noise and flames, Fred. I don't think there'd be any order. They're burning, it's supposed, supposedly burning it all off. Okay, I don't know. I, it's, it's no more than every once in a while you write when you rode down to Mass Pike and you saw a blue flame out in the middle of the, the Patrika's landfill. That's exactly what they're doing. They're burning off the excess gas. Okay. So do you need, uh, John, do you need uh, Anybody have any questions for John? Okay, this is, uh, this will start May, May 4th, so, uh, okay. Is there a, a vote that's required of us here regarding the detail rates or is that already settled? Uh, no, I don't, it's not, I don't think it's, I don't think we have anything unless you, you people have done it. Uh, and the only other question is, there's a one of our town, uh, a couple of our town employees that are interested in working this detail. And is there any issue with them taking a vacation day to do work on that detail? I mean, people can do whatever they want with their vacation days. That's what I think. I don't have a problem with that. I mean, it's vacation, right? Not sick leave. Right. Yeah, sick leave. I'd have an issue with vacation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I also checked with with Jim Savine just to see, make sure that we had consistency between departments, and he said that that there that there's no prohibition against police officers in similar situations and details. Yeah. Um, so I think John is looking for a, a motion from the board to set the the detail rate for the um, for the firefighters at thirty five dollars per hour and at the um, an engine for two hundred dollars an hour. Is that right, John? Because I have to, I have to give them a budget to figure out what it's going to cost. Okay, um, and and you think those rates are like, like how are they determined? They're just standard rates for that sort of thing. In this I use, I use, I use the choice. I use the double time rate for my firefighters. I called South Deerfield, and their their South Deerfield they pay. Uh, of course, everybody does differently. They every person in the department is paid by more. They get paid more per time on job on the job. And I call their deputy chief and he gets paid time and a half, which is a little over 35, but maybe his firefighters probably wouldn't, wouldn't mm, okay. make that rate. Okay. So it is based on sort of prevailing wages. Uh, yeah. to speak. Okay. Then I, I don't have any objection to that. And I would defer to your judgment. because That's a good amount. Okay. I make a motion. We approve the, the two rates that uh, John is asking for the $200 for the Equipment and the thirty-five dollars for the personnel, firefighters to be there. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Okay. We'll call vote. Joyce. Aye. Jonathan. Yeah. Fred. Yes. Okay. As we get closer to the May date, uh, we can put something on our website, Brian, just so people would know what's going on in case they see or hear something. Yep. Probably, okay. probably, I would think the week before. Can we, Brian? You run the robo, or is Lynn? I know Lynn does it, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, we'll have, probably ask Lynn to do it. Okay. Yes, yeah, you may have other things to include with it. So, one question for you, Brian, is, and that is, normally, like with the police department, they have a and a revolving count set up for their for the contractor to pay into? Is that an issue with mm. this? I'll have to look at that. That's a good, that's a good question. But I, I think Lynn usually does a robocall before taxes are due, which are what, May 1st? So this could be added to that robocall. Okay. I don't think Lynn's here. No, well. I'll, I'll talk to her. She's 
She'll get the message. Thank you. Okay, John. Okay, moving on. Uh, next item is on our agenda is a Jared Glansberger from DMCTC to discuss a proposed marijuana production manufacturing facility on River Road and to seek permission to hold a virtual community outreach meeting. Okay, Jared. Hi guys, um, this is Jared. Um, so we were previously before you for the Seven River Road outdoor cultivation facility. Um, so we're progressing nicely there. Um, we are now uh, under contract with the owners of Three River Road, um, where we would like to place a uh, manufacturing facility. And to that end, we are requesting um, a remote community outreach meeting. Um, we have a brief presentation prepared. Um, so if we're able to uh, share my screen, I can, uh, I can share that with you guys today. Okay, Brian. Okay, are you guys able to see DMCTC Waitley request for a virtual community outreach meeting? Yeah. Yes, okay. Yeah. Great. Okay. Uh, so it, it's a bit, uh, you know, forgive me for it being a bit extensive, um, but uh, we'll just go through the kind of the essential parts. Um, so uh, in summary, we're pursuing a marijuana product manufacturing license, um, both for adult use and for medical um, in a property adjacent to our existing Seven River Road cultivation. Uh, the site uh, proposed for this is Three River Road. Um, given the current Triple C uh, COVID-19 guidelines, which allow for a community outreach meeting to be held remotely, um, we're requesting permission to hold a remote community outreach meeting. Um, some updates. Um, so since last speaking with the select board, uh, we've received approval from Waitley Conservation Commission, ZBA and Planning Board for our proposed adult use cultivation facility. Uh, we've applied to move our existing provisional medical cultivation license from Agawam to Waitley, um, and we've received communication from the C that we should expect to obtain our provisional adult use cultivation license uh, for this facility in April. Um, we are beginning to break ground, and we fully expect to be operational uh, this year, um, to have a harvest uh, this year. Um, and we would very much like to keep um, the economic benefits of our harvest in Waitley by having a, a processing facility there. So um, the context for the site, it's right at the edge of town. Um, again, it's adjacent to our existing property. It's surrounded um, with the exception of the owner of the property. It's surrounded by other farms. Uh, across the street um, is uh, Norse Farm and the Simorowski uh, proposed cannabis project. Uh, to the that's to the east. To the west is is our proposed uh, or is our cultivation facility. To the south, uh, again, is a uh, a site being farmed by Norse. Uh, to the north is the owners. To the north of that is an empty lot, and again, to the north of that is the uh, handle of our flag lot. Um, so within uh, a 500 foot buffer of us, uh, there's the owners, there's us, and then one other residence. Uh, and then to put it into kind of a, a, a more macro context, uh, we're down here, uh, again, at the edge of town and largely surrounded by, by agricultural fields, um, really um, uh, distant from other residential neighbors and distant from um, other parts of, of, of Wheatley. Um, here's the existing condition for the site. Um, it's a small motor repair shop, showroom, and storage. Um, so you can see from drone footage taken from the public way, um, you know, it's, um, it's a traditional 11,000 square foot uh, uh, warehouse building. Um, the front part of it is used for the um, small motor warehouse. The back of it is the repair shop. And so our intention here is to tidy up uh, the site, uh, to beautify it, um, and to do some uh, natural restoration, um, which you can see here on our proposed site plan. And so this is very much in draft form. 
um, prepared for us by uh, the Berkshire Design Group. Um, and so uh, really we would come in um, and uh, do some restoration of the, uh, of the habitat. Um, we would use uh, some of this um, for, uh, for TRG or for some other porous uh, material that's a little bit easier to work with. Um, but we'd make use of the existing uh, path that, that's back here. Um, and we would just add a little bit more access to the site. Sorry, did I hear a question? Okay. Um, so that's really the, the plan for the site. Um, it, it, it stays in its existing uh, envelope. Um, we're not proposing to expand it in any way, but to um, get inside, to clean up the inside, restore it to a vanilla box, um, uh, to increase the um, amperage of the, uh, of the service there. We, we are talking to Eversource already about bringing three-phase to the site. Um, and uh, so we would reinforce it, add uh, heating and cooling to areas in the building that it currently doesn't exist. Um, and to just give you a sense um, for what it could look like, um, we have some illustrative pictures here. These are all of 253 Pharmacy from a recent article. Um, and this is really what um, we intend it to look like on the inside. Um, you know, modern uh, manufacturing, uh, packaging, assembly, um, and extraction. Um, and for our purposes, uh, you know, nothing, you know, clearly nothing could be more logistically easy for us um, than to have a site um, immediately uh, adjacent to our existing operations. Um, and so our hope is um, that we're, you know, able to move through the, the permitting process um, with the town, which has been, um, I have to say, really pretty smooth. Um, and to you know make similar progress with the state um, as we have done with our cultivation license and to get this operational uh, this year. Um, so I can go through some of the other material that we have, uh, which is really for the community outreach meeting. Um, but that's you know that's really what I want to communicate as far as our intention. So how many employees will you be working here? So um, we're looking at something like up to 18. Um, likely it can be operated much more leanly than that, um, but up to 18. So a head of operations, uh, a lab manager, we'd have several uh, trimmers and packagers, um, lab techs for the extraction facility of the lab uh, portion of this, um, security uh, and delivery drivers. And of course this would be under constant surveillance. Um, we're looking to hire uh, local retired police officers uh, to support us in our uh, security operations, um, uh, and so this is this is what we expect as a as a potential uh, as a potential workforce for the site. You know, and and if we are successful, and uh, you know, making relationships with others in the area, um, you know, we can certainly increase this. Um, and, you know, and run it, um, you know, more throughout the day, but, but, you know, as a kind of, as an initial, um, as an initial planning for the, for the, for the operation, this is what we have in mind. How long will, will your product be on site once it's all done being processed? How long will it be on site? Um, how long will it be on site? Are you, you going to have storage facilities there for your product? Once yes, it's all yes, yes. So there will be stored. Um, we, we really try to keep it as light as possible. Um, let's see, where do we have that? Um, really, we try to keep our uh, inventory and cash on hand limited to reduce just the third bullet point right. here is about um, on hand inventory and cash will be limited to reduce targeting by criminals. And so the idea here is um, we really try to push this out um, to our wholesale clients uh, as quickly as possible. Um, and increasingly, uh, transactions in the cannabis industry are no longer cash. Um, uh, I shouldn't say no longer, but increasingly they are um, electronic. Um, the bank that we're working with um, allows us to do ACH transactions. Um, very, very inexpensively. Um, and so that's our expectation is that we'll be doing uh, much more electronic transactions and, and really won't, won't have cash um, uh, at this facility. 
Okay. Oh, that's big. It's big, yes, and and you know the safe harbor legislation that's coming through um, would make that you know would make that accelerate. But already in Massachusetts, we're really fortunate that the banks that we have here allow for um, you know wires, ACHs, uh, and the like. So we we have had a just a tremendous relationship with the bank, um, and have really enjoyed working with them. How much truck traffic or delivery traffic are you expecting? So um, we have to do it at irregular times in an unmarked van. Um, there are um, very specific protocols that we have to follow. Um, so it'll be irregular, um, but at several times throughout the week. Um, but it will likely be no different than the existing showroom that goes out to do repairs um, and deliver you know, parts um, and pick up uh, you know, machinery that needs to get repaired. It'll be very, very similar to that, if not less frequent. Okay. And, and, and these aren't, um, you know, shipping containers. These are sprinter vans. These are smaller, um, uh, you know, smaller uh, vans uh, that are indistinguishable from, you know, something a plumber or a, a contractor would use. Okay. So you propose to buy the the property with all the buildings on the property? Um, we are in a lease um, and we are leasing uh, just the um, existing uh, showroom and uh, uh, repair shop. What about the residents the residents that's there? We are not touching the residents. The residence is outside of what we will have a relationship, a uh, legal relationship with. Okay. Okay, so your next step is to host. Uh... Yeah, so our next, our, our request uh, currently is to, uh, is to have you sign off on a remote community outreach meeting, uh, similar to the one, uh, similar to the letter that we received on May 18th. Um, from your May 13th uh, select board meeting, um, which just simply says, you know, the select board in its uh, March 31st <coughs> meeting uh, agreed to allow DMCTC to host a remote community outreach meeting. Um, so that's that's our request. What date are you looking for? April 6th. Mm -hmm. um. I don't see any reason. I mean, we've, we've pretty routinely granted these, so I would be willing to make a motion to um, allow DMTCT. If I hope I got all the letters right, um, we will change the name. To, I swear <laughs> <laughs> to have their community outreach meeting uh, uh, via Zoom or uh, you know an appropriate remote uh, manner. Yeah, se second, assuming that. Um all parties are, are made aware of this, even those who may struggle with electronic communication. Okay, any uh, further discussion, anybody? Thanks, Jonathan, just on that point, we've uh, made an effort to use Bitly or other URL shorteners so that people that wanna join that only have access to the paper copy of the uh, notification don't have to struggle with long URL extensions. Um, so well, that's an effort that we're trying to make to make it more accessible to. Is there to phone access join. for those people who? There's phone access as well uh, as. Uh, sort as, of a, a Zoom phone access, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, sorry, say again? A Zoom phone access, you mean? Yes, there is. There is a phone functionality that you can join it. You can't okay. see our presentation, but. Um, you can hear the discussion for for sure. Great. Okay. Part of this property is in Hatfield. Do, do they need, are they involved in this process as well? It's similar to the um, Simrowski property across the street, which has mm -hmm. access to it in Waitley, but the property and the site in which the active uh, cannabis work is being done is in Hatfield. It's exactly reciprocal to that. Is there's you know a small access road to the side of the building, 
uh, that is in Hatfield, but the entirety of the building and then the entirety of the operation will be in Waitley. Um, but we would be happy to notify Hatfield or uh, yeah, we'd be happy to notify him that, that we're doing this. Okay, any further discussion? Okay, we'll call vote. Joyce? Aye. Jonathan? Yep. Greg? <clears throat> yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. So also if, if we want to expedite this process, if and if Joyce is willing, if the board wanted to make a motion to um, designate Joyce as the select board member to negotiate mm -hmm. the terms of the HCA in case we need to do that. That way we can have that set in place before yeah. the next meeting. That way we don't need a meeting to a meeting do to that. And then another meeting to sign the HCA. Yeah, that's, that's fine with me if Joyce handles that. Okay. Okay. Uh, do we need a motion and vote on that, Brian? Um, not necessarily, but I just want everybody to be on the same page that, and you willing to do it, of course. Oh, yeah, yeah. After 10 of these or whatever we've done, you might be getting tired. Uh, yeah, but well, you know, familiarity is, is, is a good thing, I think, in this case, so. That's fine with me. Jonathan, you okay with that? I'm fine. Okay. All right, thank you. Okay, moving on. Uh, next uh, item on the agenda, or well, getting on schedule here is uh, Michael and Stephen Herbert uh, of Urban Grown to talk about the host community agreement for a proposed marijuana cultivation facility located on Route 5, south of the Whaley Diner. Okay, uh, Stephen. I have to unmute my unmute myself. Okay. Okay. Um, we met with Joyce and Brian, and uh, discussed the uh, HCA. And Brian sent back uh, a draft, and we're not going to question it. So, if that's acceptable to the other board members, uh, we're okay with it too. Mm -hmm. I did forward a um, revised sketch to Brian this morning of the um, layout of the property, how we will do it, and we'll phase it in over four different phases. Uh, we have a license for 10,000 square feet at the moment. And once we've, uh, that's the way we'll start. And once we've uh, grown a couple of uh, crops, like 10,000 square square feet, we can ask the CCC to or petition them to increase their license to a higher level. So I'm here to take any questions that you may have. So if you increase your production beyond the 10,000 square feet limit, does the town need to take an action on that? No, the um, HCA we put in there that we request the HCCA to um, accommodate that increase, saying we're negotiating that with you at the moment. There's no requirement by the state to come back to the, the town, as far as I know, uh, for another go round of this kind of meeting. But if we're limiting it to the size and you increase the size, don't we need to Take some action on that? Uh, you don't limit the size. The CCC uh, limits the size. Okay. The Cannabis Control Commission. So I'm gonna I'm gonna share my screen with with the with the site layout that you had sent this morning. Yep. And just to just to, to talk to maybe answer Fred's question. Fred, the HCA as it's currently written is written for a hundred thousand square feet of canopy. So while they're initially starting smaller, the HCA um, contemplates that it will be 100,000 square feet of canopy. Did I get that right? That's correct. Yeah, I think this happened on the previous HCA that we approved, um, I don't remember how many meetings ago. Um, but similarly, most projects start small and, and intend to expand. 
So that's um, that's been the case for at least one other, maybe more of the HCAs that we've approved. So do these four phases shown here add up to 100,000? Yes, they will. Um, each of uh, the, the smaller rectangles has, so I give you an idea, phase one has room for eight uh, 120 by 24 um, foot greenhouses. And so with all of those, we get 36 uh, greenhouses of that size. That's 2,880 square feet per greenhouse. These are all gutter connect like the ones that Tim Norse has. And so they um, save a lot of space and um, keep a lot of the site open. Um, and so this is a way of maximizing the square footage uh, to get that uh, thing. So to do a, a, a quick calculation, 36 by um, 2,880 is just over uh, 100,000 square feet. But we're not going to get there this year. We're not going to get there next year. It'll take a, a year or so to get that big. Okay. We are a, a small group of local people who are financing this. And so we're going to be self-financing to increase our size as we go. And your access is going to be off of State Road or Route 5 and 10? Correct. Off Old State Road. The exit that the truck stop uses for their semi-trailers to go back onto 5 and 10. Mm -hmm. Okay. The northern part of that is straight, uh, there's no drop into the field. It's just straight walking straight out. The southern part, um, there's a drop down from five and 10. So it makes sense to um, put the access in through uh, the northern part of the site. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that building in orange is going to be what now? What's... That is the drying and trimming building. Okay. We have, um, we will require to have some personnel to help trim, but we have machines that can simulate more than 300 uh, scissor snips every few seconds. And so we can trim by machine much faster too. Okay. Anybody have any more, any other questions? Fred, I have a couple, I have a couple questions or comments. Um, right. Just something to consider um, at some point, you're going to need to go to the Conservation Commission, right? Yes, the um, the person drawing up the site plan with an engineering stamp. Mm -hmm. uh, once we get that, that will be going there. We okay. are specifically staying out of the wetland area. Um, yeah. And so... This is both the wetland area recognized by FEMA as well as some others. And so uh, although when it rains, you get surface water as you do in any farm field, we'll be mindful of uh, doing engineering so that we can handle that water and recycle a lot of that as well. Yeah, are they, are they doing the wetland delineation, do you know? Yeah, they will be doing a wetland delin delineation. We need to talk to, we have a couple of people. Yeah, the surveying company is going to do a wetland de delineation. And I have another person uh, who can do that as well. 
Okay, so then you have to deal with the buffer zones away from that. Yeah, and we have uh, that 75 foot um, uh, setback from the wetland that is identified. Yeah, and then I think there's also a lot coverage requirement and um, the zoning bylaw. I don't recall exactly what it is, but it's 50%, which is more than it is for a residence. Yeah. So we. And, that... and if you look at the map, I think uh, taking in that wetland as well as the part at the front will be under 50%. And curb cuts, you probably need to go to Mass DOT to get a curb cut. Permission for a curb cut on a state highway? Yes. Old state road, yes, probably, yeah. So you might want to reach out to them too. Yeah. Um, do you know about how many parking spaces you're projecting to do? As many as we need. <laughs> uh, there's about 20 or more there. And we won't need that many to start with, but we've got all the rest of that space we can. So yeah. parking is not going to be a problem here as it might have been when we were considering um, working with the farm and on Christian Lane. Right. Mm -hmm. So just just for the board, the last time. So so originally you had a concept of having if people remember self-storage units, right? Correct. Um, and um, that has been, um, yeah. that's Agnes, not going forward. Agnes, who is working with us, is going to do self-storage units at another location. So we could maximize this area devoted to uh, marijuana, cannabis. Okay. I didn't get that. Oh. Could you try again? That was my silly phone Who's starting to talk to me. And in terms, in terms, I see you have a septic system located there. Um, yes, has that um, been has that been perk tested yet? You know um, how to have setbacks from the property lines for your septic. Not yet, but it will. We'll, we will do that. We, we haven't fully purchased the land yet. We've got a purchase and sale, and so we can do that um, when we need to. And it's all interior grow. Inside the greenhouses, I mean. All inside greenhouses. We have experience, uh, experimented enough in my backyard and Michael's backyard and other places um, growing and getting bud rot. Um, even when we grew the hemp in Hatfield, um, we gambled a lot. We had a very good year, but we still got some damage with disease. So this way, we can control the uh, humidity, uh, the temperature, and with drip irrigation, we won't be spraying the canopy, so you won't get foliar diseases as you would with rain. You have you have water at the site, well water, public water. We will have well water. We've done some well drilling there. And we know we can get a, about 15 gallons per minute in a given well. Um, we will do some more. And that was just a shallow well. So yes, there is water there we can get. Of course, we'd like to get town water for the bathrooms, but we understand that town water doesn't probably come down that far. Um, that the truck stop gets their water from Deerfield, we understand. But we'll check that out too. What's your time schedule for completing, say, through phase four? What do you expect that to be? A year, two years, three years? What? It may be three or four years. Okay. We can make it very profitable just getting to uh, phase two, which then will phase um, early phase two, which will phase fund the rest of the build out for all the other phases. If we get to phase three or four, Waitley does very well. Okay. 
No. I, I guess the main thing I would add here is that the HCA itself really only talks about um, like the compensation to the town for various, you know, the, like the, the 3% for local impact and charitable donations and educational donations. Um, and they've agreed to all of that. Um, and I think it's been the practice of the board though, to kind of look at the project as a whole, um, to see that that is what we think is good for the town. And like with most projects, there's, there's still some questions. Um, and so just to kind of put it in a little bit of perspective, um, that uh, uh, you know, sometimes, I, I, I guess I would wanna be clear if we were to approve this HCA, that we are not saying that we think the site plan is perfect, that we are not saying that we think it perks. We are not, there's a lot of hurdles that these folks have to go through after this. But I feel like what we should be focusing on is, do we think this is kind of good for the town? I think on, on kind of a, 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 maybe a bigger level. And I think it's fine to ask questions about whether something will perk or not. Um, but there is somebody else who's going to be checking up on those things. So just kind of with that as a, I don't know, as sort of a guidance for the, the coming questions, I think um, that's, that's something important for us. Because those are kind of the two things. We negotiate sort of the cost and then we think about the big picture. And maybe the big picture is where the questions could be right now. Yeah, we um, uh, would prefer there was one committee, but we know that there's a planning board. No, we don't have that, do we? Board, but that would yeah. make your headaches bigger if it was only one committee. Yeah, and we would not do a great job at doing everything, right? So that's... That that's might be an point. advantage to the applicant. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> okay. Uh, so we need to take, you're, ac you're asking us to take action on the host community agreement that I guess Joyce, you and Brian have got together and talked to them and, mm -hmm. and resolved all the differences are in a, and are in agreement with the way it's been uh, finalized. Presented. Correct. It's, it's is essentially the same as what we've, I mean, we've been very consistent across the board for any establishments um, and they are fine with that. They've agreed. And uh, uh, I mean, the name is changed, but this is essentially the same as the agreements we've made with other cultivators, um, which is also very similar to what uh, we've made with other, um, you know, the other groups that are Oh, either do, well, we only our first processing, I think, is going to be coming up, but the others were retail. So they're all very similar agreements. Um, but this is essentially the same as for every other cultivator that we've uh, made an agreement with. Okay. Yeah, for, for, for us, we need the HCA so that we can get a location change, is why we need it. Hmm. And the sooner we can do that, we have to file that with the Cannabis Control Commission. I know that's not necessarily your concern, but it's a concern we have. Mm. Okay, and do you still need a, a, a community outreach meeting? Um, we could hold that again, but we have held one even though it was difficult at that time. But you had a different project then than you are no, now, um, don't you? That, that was this location. Right, but you were, I thought, proposing storage units back then. Yeah, um, but the H, uh, the outreach meeting was concerning growing cannabis there. It wasn't concerning um, doing the storage there because you don't need an HCA for, you don't need an outreach meeting for storage. Right, okay. Okay, any further discussion? Okay, I'll make, I'll make a motion that we approve the uh, host community agreement for this location that's been developed. Uh, I'll second. Okay, 
Roll call vote. Joyce? Aye. Jonathan? Yep. Fred? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And I will be in touch with Brian. And uh, well, Brian can be in touch with me and see what we have to do more. I think, Brian, we need a memo or something, right? Yeah, I'll ask, I'll ask the board to sign our version. Um, and uh, we'll get it signed. And they have to sign, they'll also sign, I'll ask them to sign the, the host community agreement certification form. Very and then I'll send those to you. You can sign them, send them back to me, and you yeah. can send them off to the CCC. Or triple C, I like how Jared used that term. I'm gonna use triple C now. It's a lot easier to say. Yeah. Okay. Move I on. have one other question, if I can. Amy, right. are you re related to Bob Schrader? Yes, I am. Okay. He and I have worked together for a long time. Very nice. Okay. Okay. Okay, moving on. Next item on the agenda is Mr. Uh, Joe. Pache sick to discuss uh, proposed filming dates and potential traffic impacts of the uh, project. Uh, I I guess it's a what Waitley Diner. That's Thank correct. You guys, yes, we'll Thank you. Good evening, Pesheski. Pesheski, is that how you say it? Well, closer, closer. Piaseki. 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 Okay. Yes. Yes. Sorry about that. It's a long one. I know. <laughs> but okay, uh, I um, I actually work in Massachusetts as a location scout and uh, assistant location manager for all the movies and TV uh, they come to the state to film. So um, this particular project is it, the uh, production company is uh, Possible Productions producing a new TV series for Showtime uh, titled Marble. Uh, I'd love to go into the details about it, but they're um, producers are being pretty secretive about the, the plot. But I've been telling people if you Google it, uh, you can you can definitely find out a little more information about the uh, the actual show and and the plot of that uh, TV show for Showtime. But uh, I do want to uh, just you know let you know we we are we are filming in several different locations in, in Western Mass over the next couple months. Um, we we're searching around uh, for a while for for a diner to use as a filming location. And the director finally chose uh, Waitley Diner as, as one, of, uh, one of these many locations that we're planning to film uh, for, for five days during the first week of May. So um, right now, uh, what that entails is um, we are renting out the diner. We're planning to close the diner for, uh, for the entire week. Uh, actually, we'll close it on set the first Saturday and Sunday, the first and second of May, uh, just so we our crew can come in and decorate the diner and do what we need to do. Um, that'll be very little impact to the street. We'll be right in, you know, just working in the diner with a small crew. Uh, we'll film Monday through Friday. And then our, our crew will will put everything back uh, to the way it was on Saturday and Sunday. Um, and again, that 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 uh, restore will be very minor um, impact to to traffic. Um, however, I think the big part of this, obviously, is the filming Monday through Friday. Um, although we we do plan to close the diner, the truck stop will remain open to uh to the public that that you know if they want to come in pump gas uh we still will have trucks entering uh and parking there as they usually do we will just create sort of uh, a line of cones between the property so that we would be on one side with the diner and and truckers could come in and, and use the the opposite side um for uh for you know gas filling up and um and also uh taking a rest there as they usually do um so i think the biggest part of this would be uh, a couple of the driving scenes that we have um on route five and i was and i'll also say i am in the process of applying for a uh mass dot permit uh which is uh 
uh, about halfway through now. Um, I've, I've gotten the verbal from them, the state. I've, I've worked with the state on several occasions for other projects, and so they're moving that along. Um, and the, the permit is a request to um, it's just temporarily hold uh, traffic at either end of Route 5 um, while, while we film our drive scenes. Uh, what that would mean would be having a detail officer uh, up by Swamp Road um, towards one end and then another detail officer just beyond the, uh, the, uh, the ramp um, coming off of uh, off the highway to the diner. And then we would have another detail or a third detail officer on the ramp itself holding traffic from coming at us on the ramp. So that, that's uh, the request that I'm permitting right now. Um, now, when I, when I say traffic control, uh, basically what we want to accomplish on, on that Wednesday, um, for the most part, like I said, we're primarily inside the diner or in the front of the diner in the parking lot. On that Wednesday, we do have a couple scenes where we want to put a camera on the curb and just um, film a couple of cars driving by the diner, uh, a couple of scenes where cars will, will pull into the diner. So that way um, it actually looks like, you know, people are arriving. We'll do all of those driving scenes all on that Wednesday. Um, so uh, that's and that's when we would hold the traffic um, approximately uh, right now. What we're looking at is, is around 9 a.m. start till uh, 8 p.m. because they're all daylight scenes. Um, we would only be uh, we would only be able to film that during daylight hours. Um, so that would be and, and when I say holding traffic what we would do would be our detail officers would hold traffic for two to three minutes at a time. We would film the car driving down the street, pulling into the gas station, and then we would release traffic and let it flow. And then we would probably have a few minutes of setup. So it would be, um, you know, a minor impact, but we would not be closing the road. Um, then come Friday, we have a scene of a, uh, a tractor trailer that we would like to, um, have drive up and down route five just to capture some scenes of that um pulling into the the lot as well and we would do the same um traffic control for that closure as well where we would hold traffic for the you know two to two to three two to four minutes at a time on either end the truck would drive down the street pull into the lot we would cut camera and then we would let traffic flow so we would do that it would be a uh, temporary uh periodic traffic control, um, on the street. And that, and that right there would be, um, also during probably more like 10 or 11 o'clock, um, until eight o'clock at night on, on the Friday that we're filming. Um, I think that would be, um, so that's, that's probably, we don't, we don't foresee there being, um, you know, too much hold up in the traffic. A lot of times when we see the traffic's building up, We'll just let it flow for a couple minutes. Um, it, it would be like uh, doing any kind of road work on the street that you would see. Um, that's that's kind of the, the biggest impact that we would have during the, the entire week of being there. Um, that's uh, was there any were there any questions uh, on that? Well, my only question um, is coordination with the road construction that's going on on five ten in Deerfield. Um, if you are going to be holding up traffic during those, obviously understanding the, the small amounts of time, um, how far back do you anticipate that traffic being pushed? Because there is a significant amount of, of um, construction going on, um, you know, not too far away from that location. I, uh, I, I have been in touch with uh, the highway department and, and the chief, and uh, they've been in touch with that construction project, too, who uh, they did say they were going to try to stay sort of down by uh, Yankee Candle. That, But, yeah, I mean, that is our, our hope uh, just by holding, you know, the two to four minutes is that it, it won't back up, um, you know, uh, that's far back. Um, I mean, in all honesty, I, I, I don't know. Um, it's, it's hard to say. Um, you know, how much traffic, uh, you know, and how far back it would be held. But um, like I said, this is a quick shot of, of, of the cars just pulling into the lot. So as long as I have that time where the vehicle um, could drive down the street, pull into the parking lot, we would cut camera and that's all I would really need. So I, I think if it were to be an issue where the, the three minutes getting to the three, three or four minute mark would be if we're rolling camera and we decide to pull the car out and try to do that take again without cutting. But if we see that traffic is building up, 
It's just a matter of us having to take one, do one take, cut camera, and then let the traffic flow a little bit more often than, um, than, the, than you know, just every four minutes. Um, but I think that's something we'd have to play by ear if, um, you know, when it, when it comes down to it. But like I said, we won't have any, um, we won't have any, you know, conversations or actors getting out and talking in the road. It's simply going to be, we need to hold traffic for safety so that these vehicles can pull in and, um, and, and just pull into the lot. So um, I, I think it would be something we would have to adjust on the day and we would sort of have to, instead of doing a couple takes, like I said, do one take of the car pulling in and then let the traffic flow for a little while. Okay, so, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Okay, and I, I assume if there's uh, emergency vehicles in the area at the time that you would uh, allow them to go through. Correct, yes. Uh, I mean, we have, we'll have our, our uh, police on site um, we'll obviously have a police details who, who usually will have our crew also with details. Everyone has walkie talkie so that if we have an emergency, um, there's, there's no reason why we can't clear off the road. Um, there won't, there won't be any, any need to have you blocking the road. We won't have a camera in the middle of the road so we can easily just stop what we're doing, pull to the side of the road. And even if those vehicles at the time are driving down the road, our, our film vehicles, um, we can easily just pull them off to the side of the road. I mean, they would be following the speed limit and following traffic uh, controls, even though we do have traffic stopped. Um, you know, they'd be able to pull over to the side of the road and they would also have uh, communication in their vehicle to, to let them know that uh, an emergency vehicle is coming in to pull over. Okay, that's good to hear. Thank yep. you. No problem. Anybody else have any questions, comments? Sure, I'll, I'll pipe in for a minute. Joe, um, Keith, I'm the highway superintendent. That oh. We've emailed back and forth already. Yes. Um, and just to answer Jonathan's questions, I, I have reached out to the project manager from Warner Brothers in regards to what his requests are and made him aware that they're looking to do filming during that time frame. Um, one other thing that I will point out, and I don't know if it will be an impact to you or not, Joe, and that is um, the flaring operation going on at Berkshire Gas is not that far away from where you will be. I don't know if it'll pose any noise um, and or um, at this point in time, the flaring operation was not supposed to exceed tree, lip, tree height. Um, I, again, I, I don't know how that's all going to play, come into play, but the flaring operation was looking to begin on um, the 4th of May. 4th of May. And do you have um, times that uh, they plan on working? The, the, the flaring operation would be from 8 a.m. to dusk. To dusk. Okay. Now, and, and we, I'm sorry, in relation to the diner, where um, or how far away would you say that is, just so I can, I can kind of take yeah. a look at it? In a straight line across 91, you're probably looking at a thousand feet. Thousand feet. Okay. Um, and I, I, I'm actually not familiar with that, but normally, I mean, if it were to sound like, you know, fireworks or something like that, um, I think that it might have, you know, we probably would have an issue with sound, especially when we're recording our actors talking in the parking lot. Um, so I'm not, um, I'm not sure. I think I'm, I'm just not familiar with, with how loud it, it would be or what you could compare it to. But I would say if, if it would, if it was like a filming, uh, was like a firework display, then that would, that would definitely uh, pose a problem. All right. I, I guess the simplest thing for me is to rather than discuss it anymore, I can, I can contact you and, and work through the Berkshire gas representative and I'll get you that answer. Yeah, that would be, that would be great. I, um, like I said, I've, I've kind of, I've never really come in now, now, just so I know, um, are they, is it, is it like blasting or what is. They, they need to do work on their operation facility and they're going to be burning off excess methane gas. So it's basically going to be like a giant torch. That's an easy way to explain it. So the, the, the gas, the flame may be, at the very least, I'm sure it's going to be at least treetop height. Okay. Okay. So we're looking at, say, a 50 to 60 foot 
High Flame. All right. And, and their company, just so I can uh, Google that too. I'm sorry. What was the name of their company? Berkshire Gas. Berkshire Gas. Okay. All right. Do you have a more... address for that, Keith? I know it's on one plane. Do you know the number? Not offhand. I can um, I can Google that and, and just see what it would be uh, in relationship to that. But I, I think I'm more concerned with the sound and how constant, um, you know, that sound, how loud it would be and um, and and how often. Um, I mean, if it was going to be periodically uh, between those hours, you know, uh, you know, a couple booms or whatever it may be. And then and then it would be done for a few hours. I might be able to live with that. But if it was constant for, you know, 8 a.m. to dusk um, and, and it was and it was as loud as, you know, fireworks going off, that might be an issue for our sound. Um, but again, I mean, I'm also dealing with the sound of the highway. So, um, you know, I, I just I really have to uh, I really have to figure out um, what that what that would look like. I mean, I might even go to the point of uh trying to youtube it and find out what something like that would look like um because i mean i really don't want to run into a situation where we're there with the actors and everybody's there and um and we can't we can't even hear the actors talk or we're picking it up on the microphones um if it if it's you know that loud it's, um, not, it's not that loud is it keith i don't think it's going to be an issue i just wanted to make you aware that this is going to be happening simultaneously and and they're flaring when i say flaring that's a terminology you, they use for when they're burning off this gas um, yeah it will be constant from 8 a.m to dusk yeah and i i just I, don't, I don't think it's going to be that loud and, yeah. and as i said i i have um i've had a meeting with them with along with the fire chief last week okay. and, and i can put you in contact we can discuss it more and we'll i'll get an answer to you how loud it is yeah, no, that's perfect. I appreciate it. Thanks for bringing that up. Every little thing, uh, you know, especially with filming, uh, I, you know, I'd like to at least warn them ahead of time and, and be specific with our producers on what it is so that, uh, you know, we can make adjustments or at least be, be ready for it. But we can be in touch about that. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe you can work the player into the script. Yeah. <laughs> you you would, never know. Maybe. I would think there, there would be a, the amount of noise is going to depend on how much volume of gas comes out. So if they could minimize that, I think they need to be aware of what's happening at the diner. So they don't all of a sudden release all the gas in one or two days rather than the whole week is being planned because other activities. So if they I mean, do it gradually and, and it's not a loud noise, that may be acceptable, but they need to be aware of that. The yeah, and the other part of this too is I can now I can sort of hone in on our times because as we get later in the um, as we get later in the in the week we actually have some night filming as well so as we get later in the week although the first couple days are day filming once I get once I do get to Wednesday. Um, now I'm starting my days at 11 and I'm probably going to 11 at night. So only half my day is, is during the day and the other half is night. So, and, and once I get to Thursday and Friday, I'm almost into all night. So I really can hone in on our schedule so that if we do have to sort of work together with timing, I mean, I don't know if there's a way that we can work with them to, you know, hold off on some hours and, and not others or, uh, but like I said, I'd love to be able to talk with somebody with, the, you know, with their company and also, uh, you know, outside of this meeting, maybe sort of get into it a little bit more on, on what that will really look like. Um, because, again, I'm just not familiar with that process. And and I don't know, um, you know, how how much light it will throw off, especially. Um, but again, if we're filming during the day, I mean, if we're filming during the day and it's I just I think it's probably a conversation we'll just have to have outside of this meeting. And uh, I'd love to get in touch with the people running that operation over there and maybe they could explain it a little better. But thank you. Thank you. OK. Uh, any any further discussion on this when we move I, on? I, I did just have one other question uh, in regards to some of our support space. We're reaching out to some of the businesses in the area as well um, to rent some uh, some space in parking lots to, uh, to to stage our equipment and to also stage some of our lighting and equipment trucks. Um, I I did come across uh, on Route 5. 
there's a snow, but it's labeled as a snowmobile lot, a snowmobile club lot, um, just, just across from swamp road. And I, um, I looked it up on the assessor's site and it's coming up that it's owned by uh, the town, uh, town of Waitley. So I, I didn't know if anybody was familiar with that lot and if it might be available as a rental for the week for a rental. For the sum of, you know, $5,000 a day, not a problem at all. <laughs> <laughs> he can have it for five thousand. Well, you can, you can buy the lot for five thousand. No. <laughs> oh, really? Uh, yeah. So, well, that being said, I, I, if it is the town lot, and um, and and uh, I might want to consider. Right now, my plan is to set up a couple of catering tents uh, over in the Yankee Candle parking lot. I'm working out a deal with Yankee Candle to to, to do a lot of our base camp and our active trailers over there. Um, however, with, uh, with the thought of this construction happening, um, and the fact that I can't have, I have to shuttle my crew with buses and I can't have as many people in buses anymore because of COVID. Um, I want, I'm, I'm thinking I might want to consider renting that lot to put up a couple tents, uh, even, uh, you know, to feed our crew over there. I do have to get over there and measure it out and, and, and make sure it would be big enough. But another part of this would be, it does look like there maybe was a building that was in there and it's kind of rough in the middle of the lot. We might consider, um, if, if possible, um, and if the price is right on, on for us, uh, flattening, bringing, bringing some trucks in there and kind of flattening that out and, and making it nice and, uh, making it so that I could set up a couple tents, but kind of uh, maybe, maybe drop some material in there, flatten it out, roll it out and uh, kind of neaten it up. So if, I don't know if that would be an option or not, but um, if, if it was an option, it, it might be worth it for me to, uh, to put it, rent it and, and fix it up and put a couple tents there for the week. I, I guess that's, that's an option. Uh... I don't know what you're going to run into once you start excavating there. There was a restaurant there, and I don't know what kind of uh, residual effects of the, of the restaurant are on the property. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There, there is a septic field, as you, as you know, behind there on, on the, the east side, of far back side of it, and you're yep. into wetlands all around it, so you, you can't go real close to the wooded areas. Yeah. So, I, I really did want to, and I have to get another, I, this was me just driving through it, uh, you know, a few days back and I went on the assessor's site and, and looked it up and, and it happened to be the town and, and it just, um, I just wanted to start the conversation. I'm going to take a closer look at it tomorrow and, we, and wheel it out and measure it out and see if it would even work. I, I would definitely want to stay on the pavement. Um, and obviously, um, again, you know, if, if it was a restaurant, I, I mean, again, I don't want to get into digging and it would be a matter of, if I could bring a company in there that could look at it and could tell me that they could neaten it up a little bit, and flatten it out um, just so that I could put up a couple tents and set up some tables and chairs. That's probably the extent of all I would want to do on it. Um, but again, I would have to have somebody look at it and see that that would be possible. Um, I just wanted to start the conversation while we you know, had everybody together tonight and see if that might be an option. Okay, yeah, I, I don't see a problem with that. I, I guess present us with something. Develop okay. what you plan on doing, present it to us, and, and we'll, okay. we'll make a decision. So Okay, but I, I don't want that to hold up. This is a whole separate uh, part of mm -hmm. this, so I, I don't yeah. want that to hold right. up there. We're, we're, um, we're open. Yeah. To, uh, at least I'm open to, to hear what you have to present on that. So Okay, excellent. All right, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. That's um. I think that's all I have. Unless anyone else has any other questions. Okay. okay no. Once you. Thank you. <clears throat> Fred, just one Joe. Once you have that stuff pulled together, you can you can shoot, uh, Amy and I an email. Um, okay. We can we can forward that off to the board. Okay, we'll do. I'll do that. Thank you. Yep. And Brian's our go-to guy on using that lot. So. Okay. <laughs> sure. <laughs> but if you if you want to buy it seriously, we can talk. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> don't put it out there. They make, <laughs> I don't know. Um, but again, uh, yeah. What's the price? <laughs> it can <laughs> be a movie chat. lot. We yeah, could yeah, have I'm, our own movie lot there permanently. Exactly. Why not? I, I'm sick of working in Boston. I love, I mean, it's a two hour, it's a two hour commute from me from home, but uh, hence why I'm in my car right now. But <laughs> um, <laughs> mm -hmm. I, uh, I'll be staying out there for the week uh, once we film. But, um, but yeah, um, 
I, uh, yeah, we'll talk more about it. I don't want to take up any more of your time. Thank you so much for okay. the uh, invitation. And, and uh, we're happy to be here filming. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay, Joe. Thanks. All right. Thank, okay. thank you. Thanks, Joe. On our agenda, next item is COVID-19 state of emergency. Brian, is there anything particular we need to talk about other than, you know, the state, I guess, is relaxed some requirements on the size of meeting groups, indoors and outdoors. I think we've all seen that. Uh, anything you want to bring up in particular? Um, no, I just wanted us to be aware of that. Um, I think I forwarded today there, there was another uh, COVID case in Waitley, so it's certainly not, not over yet. Um, vaccine rollout still kind of kind of slow. Um, I mean, I have had at least one question from, from a committee as to whether or when in-person meetings will be uh, a possibility. Um, I didn't give an answer. Um, and I, it's going to, so I guess, Fred, I just wanted to say that, that I think it's going to take a lot of planning. So, um, it's, so it's just going to take some time and some planning and figuring out and getting things lined up as to how we can do it safely. But I, I don't think obviously now is the right time. Yeah. And this, these, um, limits don't actually apply to, uh, town meetings. Correct. Yeah. Okay, yep. so we'll continue the way we, we have uh, with our existing guidelines and resolutions right now until uh, it needs to be discussed in future meetings. So, okay. Okay, moving on under old business. Uh, discuss the mission of expression of interest to the One Stop for Community Growth Program. Yep, I just, that's... Uh, so this is the new grant program. Um, and I think um, Jonathan and I are gonna maybe discuss it in a little bit more detail tomorrow morning, but um, this is the new grant program. Well, it's the old grant program. A lot of old grant programs repackaged into a different submission process, which with communities, small communities with very little staff makes it even more difficult to do. Although mm -hmm. they think the opposite is happening because they're gonna give us meaningful advice on, you know, on our projects and it's going to make it so much easier, but you can, right. you, for whom <laughs> you can hear my skepticism. It's going to make it easier for municipalities who have staff to go through the process. Um, but, um, but it is what it is. Um, and it's, it's, um, so why it's relevant now is that there's an opportunity to submit, uh, submit expressions of interest by, um, April 2nd. And really, those are really just broad overviews of um, really um, economic development or community development um, projects or initiatives that the town wants to consider. Um, so I, I've had a couple thoughts on this um, or a couple approaches on it. Um, one is uh, to take, um, well, I want to talk about project ideas a little bit, um, but one is to, to kind of hone in on one project um, that we think we could do, or we could submit multiple projects or ideas as to really as to what we've talked about in the past as to what the town might want to focus on or what the town might have needs for. Um, so I think we can submit up to, to it's either four or five. Um, and I mean, I just want to share what, what I think we've talked about before if we could, if we could just have a little bit of guidance as to, um, as to what the board thinks um, might okay. be priorities. Um, no. Brian, are these going to be different than later on? You talk about the America Rescue Plan funding. Is this can this be the same types of projects, or is this going to be different? Um, these these are different. These are these would be projects for. Um, for specific grant programs that the state runs. Um, there's, I, don't, I think there's about 12 grant programs that are, that are kind of brought into this process. Um, and it's, some of them are listed on the, on the sheet in your handouts. Um, you know, it's going to bring in under the, under this one umbrella, it's bringing in MassWorks, 
Urban Agenda, 43D, Expedited Permitting, Housing Choice, Massachusetts, Downtown Initiative. Um, the two that I think are are what make it worthwhile for Waitley um, is that they have new uh, they have a new community planning grant program and even more geared towards small towns as a rural development fund. Um, and then they're also bringing in brownfields and site readiness. Um, and they also have a program for underutilized properties. So I was trying to think of ideas that I that I had heard or that we had talked about before. Um, and I was trying to keep them really as, as broad as possible. Um, Jonathan and I have talked, we've had discussions about, which I guess we'll call it exit 35 now. I think it's 35. It's yeah. confusing. 35? Yeah. Um, well, I that was, area. I'm saying 35, so you remember that number. That's a, it's well, it's hard to remember. <laughs> It works out its way, yeah. so. Um, you know, that that whole area, it, it's really high traffic area. We've kind of gone over that before. Um, I talked to Wayne about, because um, one component of this is mass works and infrastructure. What what sort of big ticket items would the, would the water system want? What projects would they want to do um, if they had funding to do so? Um, and there were two projects that he had mentioned today. One was to and these would essentially create loops in the system so that it would improve water flow and water quality. Um, we talked about Egypt Road Loop and a, a, uh, to close the loop on Swamp Road. Um, and then this came up in the MVP, the MVP uh, planning workshops that we did is that we, were really, we, we really only have a single source of water. Um, and if something were to happen to that, we would probably, we would be in trouble. Um, affordable housing is something that, that We've continually talked about, uh, the housing committee talks about it. There's a Whitley Housing Trust that has a hundred plus thousand dollars um, of CPA funds that remains in that account. Um, and then um, is there anything to do with, you know, future industrial land or things like that? The park here where where the, where the office is, is, is essentially full. Um, obviously there's the vacant land for um, that Covestro owns, but um, I think they have plans for that and they own that. Um, so it's just kind of thinking more about, about you know, future projects for the town and really just getting our foot in the door and making the projects known. So I don't know if we have other project ideas or, or we want to strike some of these. Um, I don't know what the board has any uh, right, Tri Town would be considered perhaps part of the exit 35 planning, Brian, or is that probably not going to happen? Um, yeah, I think we could probably include that in there. Um, you know, some of these are at sort of different, different, um, different stages of development. The, the area planning is really a, is really in its, you know, early stages. Um, so I think the idea there would be to we to try to do some high level planning and some area planning right. initially and then work down from there. Cause we can go back to the well in theory repeatedly. Right. No pun intended with the water projects. <laughs> oh, pun intended is fine. The, the Egypt, Egypt road, uh, all the water ones is, is a, a major concern, not only closing the loop, but it's going to affect, and it does impact the, the water quality of people in Pine Plains Estates and, and along Long Plain Road today. That's, that's a problem today. If you don't close that loop, I think something needs to be looked at of improving the water quality. There's people along there that can't drink the water, don't drink the water because they don't feel it's safe. Uh, I, I think uh, that should be a high, a high priority. And... The other, the other reason to, to close that loop is if something happens to the water line on Christian Lane, if it's closed, if it's if it is a break in a water line, half of the town, everybody is going to be without water for days until it's repaired. All our town offices, our schools are going to be without water. We need a we need a backup loop. That's what that loop would do: provide uh, water to maintain the rest of the town, half the town. 
right now, I, I think that that is a, a serious concern. If you know, we keep hearing of, of water breaks all over the all over the county, the area, we, we need to be prepared, and that's one one thing that would that would help that. So I, I guess I would of all of these. I, I, to me, I think that's that's the highest priority on this on this list, and. The, the other thing, I guess kind of related to housing, you know, we, we've got two buildings the town owns or used to own. You know, we've got the blue school. Uh, you know, we don't own it. We don't know what's happening, if anything will ever happen there. And the center school, uh, we're going to be dealing with that in the, this year yet. Whether there's some kind of assistance to, to partner with developers or even the owners of these buildings to, to get something developed in the buildings, whether it's housing or, or uh, commercial development, uh, some kind of commercial to do that. Uh, you know, I, I hear the one owner is struggling trying to get financing uh, or, or occupants for it. I, I don't know, maybe there's something that we could do to facilitate that or to coordinate efforts. Uh, I don't know, it just seems these buildings are just sitting there and maybe we could initiate something, maybe not. And, and the other thing as far as is, is growth uh, areas, there was a, a, a study that the town did I think FERCOG was involved, and, and I know Jonathan Joyce were there. We had a meetings, public meetings, and we identified areas of the town where we should be looking at future growth. And I think, you know, the State Road Corridor was one, we even one was in West Whaley uh, around the reservoir area. And I don't know, the Industrial Park maybe was another area. Maybe it's worthwhile to, to look at what areas what was identified from that effort. I don't exactly remember what, what the, was it growth or economic development or, or what? We, we had a study, there was a public meeting with, I don't know, 25, 30 people there. Mm -hmm. We identified areas on a map. I think we, we identified not only areas, but like maybe types of improvements or, or projects that could be developed. Yeah, Fred, I'm not sure that that conversation extended far enough to, to be of any usefulness in this. I could be wrong, but I, 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 I don't think it got that granular. Well, I, I, I don't know. We, 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 I guess maybe it's worth taking a look at. I don't know. That's been, what, two or three years? I don't know. Maybe longer. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I guess my, my main thought about the list as it stands right now is that some projects are a little bit more immediate, like the water system improvements or things that are closer to being kind of shovel ready. And as Fred said, there's some sort of, um, well, there, there's, there's, I guess, a greater sense of urgency because that's our water supply. Um, what strikes me about all of the others are ones where we're, we're nowhere near knowing what exactly to do on those and that um, that planning is really the key word there. So that to me, that kind of differentiates the water system improvements from the other things um, that some are, are more future focused and some are more immediate focused. And I would hesitate to just, you know, prioritize just based on what's the most immediate. Um, I, but so I think we should definitely try for things that are both in kind of the longer term planning. And if we can get something, if they, they may have funds that are for long term and for short term, I don't think we should um, over prioritize necessarily here. Um, but I think I'm glad um, we thought to put the center school on there because that is something that's been kind of, uh, we've been dragging that around since COVID, right? We thought we would be, <laughs> have figured out by now what, uh, what we were doing at the center school, but uh, I think uh, that's a good thing to add. Yeah. I mean, the blue school, we have less, I mean, since we don't own it, but if we can help 
but the the current owner find partners to complete the housing that was planned there. I think um, if that's something that fits <clears throat> one of these one stop um, things that would actually kind of hit in the affordable housing because there were going to be 20 something percent of the units that were going to be affordable. The exit 35 piece is also something that I, I, I think we need to keep a close eye on um, with, with Treehouse Brewery mm -hmm. going in just down the road um, with, with the, all the activity that's going to increase in that area um, over time, I, I think having a strategy to really maximize that that area as a as an asset for the town um, it is really something that we need to 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 keep our eye on because um, we're not going to have the opportunity forever. Uh, and 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 the treehouse evolution is is really it, it doesn't happen very often, and it's going to be a big deal. So I think Joyce, the point I'm making is I, I agree 100% yeah. with what you're saying. There, there are more things that that we want to do than we can possibly do at this point. Um, but mm -hmm. there's so many things we could we could tackle. Um, you know, I, yeah. I I just don't want to miss an opportunity. So at this point, Brian, you need us to vote on something, or this is something that you wanted our input, and then you and Jonathan are going to hone down and and put this application in is that um so so i don't think it requires a, a prioritization um it says just describe up to five top priority projects or initiatives that the applicant intends to submit um for grant consideration so um it, it's an optional process it's something that we don't have to do but it's something fairly simple that we can do We'll have discussions. Mm -hmm. Well, so the way it's supposed to work is we'll be contacted by staff of the one-stop program who are work with the different agencies and they'll give us direction as to what the next step is to move these projects along. Um, it's meant as, um, so they want to know, they want they want ideas on this, that are on the development spectrum from just concept to things that are engineered and, and you know, need construction mm -hmm. funds. They want to see, um, you know, where our, where we're trying to focus on and, and how they can help. So there is there is a benefit to it, I think, um, but I don't I don't think it needs to be prioritized. I, I, I do think this is a, a lesson learned that, <clears throat> you know, we mentioned the blue school and 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 we've known for I don't know how long that an RFP really needs to be put out um, so that we know what what's out there for for options um you know we've all agreed and the committee agreed that we don't know so much uh, and an rfp would answer so many questions about what's viable what's not viable um and then we can fit the viability in with with, with town sentiment um and not having done that rfp so we're still running blind um really puts us in, in an awkward place because we can't move forward on something like that uh, on that property with with a grant opportunity such as one stop because we the timing just isn't working out so I, I think it does it's a poster child for why we need to get an RFP put together and and get it out just to better educate us in terms of project viability and and, and what what interests people have out there okay it's Getting back to the, the water system improvements, you know, like I mentioned, the Egypt Road thing is is critical to maintaining our second uh, connection to the half of the town. But the, the thing that's that's concerning or controlling on that is is the railroad. Uh, I, I hear there there needs to be coordination with the railroad to go under the railroad to to make that water connection. Uh, that may be a, uh, a coordination effort to work with the right people at the railroad, or I don't know whether it's under mass uh, DOT now or not, but uh, that could take some time to resolve that issue. So I, I think that's important that, you know, we may need some help from legislature or somebody or 
for Mass DOT to, to uh, promote that project. Okay. It's more than just a town going out there and making a connection. It's, it's as you probably know, Brian, uh, it's coordination effort needs to be done first. Uh, the term getting railroaded me came from somewhere. Right. What do we do? What's the, okay. what's the I mean, Brian, you and I will meet tomorrow. Yeah. Um, We'll, we'll, we'll talk about the priorities or, or, or putting together a list. I think that with five options um, available to be, to be submitted um, that everything we've discussed tonight can be fit into that document. And then we sort of wait for the, the, the staff at one stop to tell us what they are thinking in terms of what we've submitted. So I, I, I think this is a good conversation about what, we would like to see happen and the pros and cons of everything. Um, we'll do our piece and then we'll wait to hear uh, instruction from, from the state going forward. Is yeah, it's just, yeah, it's just getting the ideas in there. And right, yeah. I think these are all great ideas. I think Fred's idea about water is great. I think I, I, I think that the, 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 the planning area, um, I think, you know, the center school, blue school, I think I think we've all got great ideas and, and I think this is an opportunity to, to see what we can uh, move down the field. Okay. So let's just go go from there and and we'll report back and see what happens. Brian, would would they fund a uh, a position in town? Say we wanted to hire a, a planner to address these issues we, we've identified here. Would they provide funding for a staff? No, it was under the frequently asked questions. Nope. No. Okay. They recognize that a lot of towns don't have staff to do this, and they right. <laughs> essentially say, "Too bad." <laughs> yeah, okay. too they said, bad. We'll do our best. Okay, moving on. I guess Keith has been waiting patiently. I guess for <laughs> this item on the agenda to talk about future plans for the winter sidewalk maintenance and discuss the need for the town to buy equipment to maintain sidewalks. In, uh, in the town, and I assume this would be, you know, along at least Chestnut Plain Road and also around the buildings, or is that a different uh, item? I can comment in regards to this, this conversation started a while ago where um, the idea was to talk to Joe Zawinski, who now works for Williston and in fact, they have uh, many um, units that do sidewalk clearing and so forth. So I had talked to him and he had said to me that they were in the process of um, trading in a machine that they use. And he said it would be perfect and ideal for what Waitley has and needs for the sidewalk removal. And he gave me, he gave me a number and then subsequently you know, that's the number, that's what I had submitted to the capital planning committee. And subsequently, after talking with Joe some more, he had said that, you know, the, this deal, the trade-in number was something that he's already worked with um, Bacon's equipment in Williamsburg. In, and so this is, this deal is supposed to be going down sometime fairly soon. So timing wise for us, is probably might not work. So I, I have talked to Bacon's and obviously they're looking at not, not selling it for the same price that they offered it in trade. So they are going to let me know what it is. I don't know at the moment what that is. And it may be, it may exceed what we want to propose on it. So um, Brian and I talked a little bit about it at this point in time with what we have going um, with the contractor, with John, who did it this year. We spent $3,000. Um, this was obviously the first time. We didn't really know what we were up against. Um, I feel that, you know, we certainly had a, a mild winter in that aspect. Um, 
we didn't do a single snowstorm in the month of March. Well, today's not over yet, right? But um, anyways, not, we, you know, it's, it's been a pretty lenient year as far as snow removal. And certainly we didn't spend very much with um, JD and that contract doing the, um, the sidewalks either. So it's, it's food for thought. Um, I think ultimately it would be probably the beneficial for the town to own the machine. Um, however, maybe now is not the timing. I, I don't know, but that's, that's up for discussion. Okay. Now this is, so is the deal with, with Joe at Williston already gone by? We missed the date. Well, again, way, the way it was put to me is that he, when he first talked to me, I, I was led to believe that, yeah, the deal was going to happen at some point in time. And if the town of Waitley came up with the, in this case, it was $12,000. If, um, if the town of Waitley came up with 12000 it wouldn't matter to him. But I guess by the sounds of it, um, this deal is happening fairly soon. So I didn't get the opinion that it would be an option for Waitley to say to Williston, here's the $12,000. we will take it. I don't think that's going to work. Okay. Is this, you, the that they, is this the machine that they use to plow their pond, et cetera, and, and, and other sidewalks? They, it, they have multiple of these units. And this is a unit that has a, it's a small cab unit. And that's what they use to clear all their sidewalks. And he said it does a fabulous job. It's perfect for what we need is what he told me. One, one took a swim in the, in the in the pond over the winter. So I just want to make sure that it's, that it that it that it's working effectively and that okay you know, I am it it literally took a swim in the pond the, the ice the ice was not strong as you would want so we just want to make sure that it's and I you know and I'm not I trust Joe implicitly so you know I just want to okay do, do we know if other colleges or universities in the area have equipment that they're looking to sell or trade in to get a deal. You know, it certainly is a is a possibility, and we could inquire with other agencies to see and potentially be beneficial to offer them the money that they'd receive in trade in. Because ultimately, I I feel that's where we're probably going to be best to get it, rather than going to look for buying a used machine ourselves. It's probably going to be a little bit more. Amy's got a question, Fred. Okay, Amy. Uh, Keith, do you have any idea how long it would take to for to use that piece of equipment to do the snow removal on the sidewalks? Um, John was doing it, and you know, and you're looking at a couple hours. And so obviously, it would depend on the amount of snow that fell. But I'm just curious. So, if you're for a highway employee if you do your 40 hour work week and then it snows on Saturday and then you go and you remove the snow off the sidewalks, you would get paid time and a half. Yes. The, okay. Yeah. A time and a half rate. Right. And so you've got to look, you've got to factor that into the equation also. Yes. The labor that Waitley would be paying. Okay. So, so, so really how this, Really, how this came up was there was a capital request that was that 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 was submitted for the for the piece of equipment, and it went to the 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 CIPC and the the CIPC really didn't know how to rate it because it really depended on on whether the town was going to continue to use a contractor or to to do the to do the work in house. So that's that request is eventually going to come before the finance committee. Um, and that question still remains as to whether it remains a, a capital request that should go on the warrant or not. Um, and that begs the question as to really what the board wants to do with winter sidewalk maintenance. Um, I, so like he said, the, the, the cost for this winter were $3,000. Um, there wasn't any, I don't, there wasn't any additional costs. It was $3,000. 
Um, so I, I think we're lucky that, that, that we're able to find somebody local that wants to do it for a, a reasonable cost. Um, Keith, you were, I don't think anybody else was interested in the, in the work. Um, so that's something to think about. We, when we put it out, when we put it out the bid, we only got one response and we reached out to a number of, of local companies that did it. Um, so that may weigh in favor of us that at some point having to do it in house. Um, but I don't know what the timing of that might be. Okay. But getting back to, I guess I asked the question, maybe you didn't understand if the town is, if you're buying his equipment to do the sidewalks along Chestnut Plain Road, is the town also going to do the ones around the buildings, around the library and the town hall? Would that be part of the your winter maintenance, or are we still going to have the separate contract for that? Well, the the, the difference there, Fred, is, and the, I would recommend they still be separate because you're you're dealing with the the snow blowing that we did with John was post storm so that if it snowed a foot he didn't go out until it was all done whereas the snow sh shoveling and the sidewalk shoveling and the little bit of snow blowing with the small snow blowers that they used that's being done every three inches so that when it's if it's a if your town office is open you don't want that to be in the position where you are waiting till the next day to have it shoveled it needs to be done during the hours. Okay. So I guess I'm wondering how we make this process move forward. Um, I, I sort of feel like we could talk about this endlessly. Um, I, I, I don't feel like I have enough information to make a decision, but I don't know what information I'm missing that would help me make a decision. And, and maybe that's my problem not anybody else's but I don't, I don't know where this goes can i ask another quick question as a resident just a quick sure. question. go ahead amy is there any way we can find out how many people utilize the sidewalks in the winter like either in the waitley scoop or some some way we can gather information to see if people did use them yes that's an option i, I i've been told by various people in town that they do use them, they do walk in the winter, they, they like them to be there. And they, they think it's it's a nice uh, feature of being in the center of town, I, I guess, as well. Yeah. I, they I they winter a lot more than I anticipated myself. I, I mean, Keith, do we think that in terms of, I mean, at least annual town meeting, should we not pursue that capital request? and? Yeah, I would probably at this point then recommend that, you know, we we table it for now. Certainly it appears that when I had talked to Bacon, they, all they did tell me is they are not about to sell it for the same price that they offered or that they're giving it in trade. So it's going to be a lot more or certainly more. So let's let's wait on it. We can, you know, we, we spent 3000 this year. Let's do it another year with the contractor and, and then evaluate it. Okay. I think as a, as a suggestion, maybe, you know, over the next several months, look at equipment. Your equipment needs, Keith, what, what's, what would be available if you bought a piece of equipment there just for, for snow blowing, snow clearing, because I think this tractor also does lawn mowing and if you just bought something for winter maintenance would it be a different price and then also consider if you're going to buy another lawnmower for your town use uh, how would that fit in with this vehicle you're buying that could be used for winter maintenance I mean if you're going to buy a, a new lawnmower anyway you need one well maybe we should buy one with a snowblower attachment say for it as well so I guess look at it that way and come up with with a proposal. I guess of what you think we should do. Yeah, that's that's sort of on the same line I'm thinking. The reason why I'm saying you know let's just wait on it for now. Yeah. Um, 
and again, I was responding to the fact that um, this seemed like it would have been a, a good price if we could have negotiated it outside of the, you know, strictly with Williston, if we could have negotiated it that way, but it doesn't appear that that's going to be an option. It, it may still be available in the fall if they haven't sold it, so. Well, all he told me is that when I talked to Bacons, he said these machines customarily go for in the $20,000 range used. Oh, okay. Okay, so we'll hold off on that and let you provide us something later on in the year. Very good. Uh, moving on to discuss uh, whether to opt out of the mosquito control spraying program. Brian? Um, I just received an email from Fran after I followed up with him. Um, they are looking at opt-out options and alternative mosquito management plans. Um, he suspects the Board of Health won't have a recommendation on this until mid to end of April. He said their preference now would be to consider opting out with an alternate plan, but there's nothing to there's nothing to take action on at this point. Just an FYI. Yeah, it's coming down the pike. Okay. Moving on, the next item is appoint Allison Bell to the Waitley Historical Commission. So there's a, there's a vacancy on the commission. Yeah, Darcy, uh, Darcy Tozier resigned. Darcy left. Okay. Okay, I'll make a motion to appoint Allison Bell to the Waitley Historic Commission. Second. Second. Third. Okay, roll call vote. Joyce? Aye. Jonathan? Absolutely. Fred, yes. Okay, next item to appoint Rick Adamchek as inspector of animals. I move that we appoint Rick Adamchek as the inspector of animals. Second motion. Uh, roll call vote, Joyce. Aye. Jonathan? Yeah. Fred, yes. Okay. Down to the ministry updates. Brian, you have a few items here you want to talk about? Yeah, um, so uh, for the special town meeting that's going to be held on April 10th, um, Lynn and I were thinking about recommending that we actually move it to the, the cement patio that's outside the conference room. Um, that'll give us better um, access to electricity. Um, it's handicapped accessible, and it will keep people out of the parking lot where um, we're going to be trying to park. Um, you don't expect a, a huge turnout. We could be surprised, but um, we'll set it up in the grass area. Uh, anybody who has mobility issues can. We'll have an area on the on the cement patio that they could go. Um, we'll have the restrooms in the in the town offices. So um, we think that should work out well. Um, but that's about that. Um, I don't know if there's any questions on that, but we'll refine those. So will there be chairs and stuff set up outside or is it going to be just standing room and bring your own? Um, we'll set some chairs up um, spaced out so we get people get a sense of where they should and should not be. I mean, it's, I think, I think we ended up with four articles. So if it's more than 10, five minutes, it's 10 minutes. It's, mm -hmm. um, I'd be surprised. So, okay. Um, America Rescue Plan, that's, um, that's essentially, that's the most recent federal stimulus. Um, we still don't have a lot of direction from the state that money's being passed through the states. Um, we've set, we've seen tentative amounts, um, in the amount of 450,000, 450,000. Yeah. Um, we don't know what those, what that will be, what the eligible uses will be. Um, in the text of the actual legislation, it said it could be used for, for investments in uh, sewer, water, and broadband infrastructure. So we can be pretty certain that those could be possibilities, and we should talk um, at a meeting in the future as to how we might, how the town might want to spend and invest those funds. Um, there was a, a email that I had included in the packet from 
um, the Franklin Regional Retirement System. There's legislation pending that um, that will give credit to public retirement credit for public employees for essential for public employees who were essential workers during the uh, the COVID nineteen pandemic. Um, so that would eventually give retirement credit. Um, so I would, I don't know that we need to discuss it, but I wanted to let you know that it's in there um, if you wanted to take a look. Obviously, if we're, we're giving retirement credit for a number of years um, and we don't have, and, and we, don't, we don't have those years to pay into the system, there's a future cost associated with that. Um, and um, Dale Kowacki goes into that better than I could discuss it, nor would we want to discuss it after two hours and 10 minutes of a meeting. Um, but it's in there. Um, let's see. Um, just a reminder, folks, that there that the 250th Motor Parade is going to be held on April 24th. Um, I saw the sign on the the, the fire station fence. Um, we do have an advertisement out. This is not related to the parade. We do have an advertisement out for uh, to hire a new custodian. Um, and that should, we should begin reviewing resumes on April 5th for that. So if anybody's interested in, in being a custodian at the down buildings, they could su uh, submit an application. Frank, um, Frank, can you please, where where is that announcement? Not for, uh, me, you know, for people who I might know. For the custodian hiring? Yeah. Um, it's been in the newspaper. It's posted at the town offices. Um, is it on the, I don't, it's on the website. I would, yeah, maybe saying, yeah. Okay. Um, one of the things that, that Jonathan and I talked briefly about was, um, I don't know that, you know, that I'm going to connect these two, but, um, um, uh, the need for, um, upgrades to a, or installation of a new playground to Waitley Elementary School. There's been talk about, I think it's the elementary school, right? Um, having some more um, playground installation or something for um, students. Um, but it relates to this, the conservation assistance for small communities grant, which requires us to um, submit a park grant. So that's something we just want to keep in mind. Um, which doesn't mean we need to get it, but we need to put in a submission for it. Um, that, that's important because we actually talked about that project in the rec committee meeting earlier this this evening um okay so we want to make sure that we know where we're applying for different layers of funds yep um, because this includes the, the concept that we were talking about includes sort of leveling the entire grassy area and then increasing playground equipment to meet the needs of older students as well so um it, it's a it's a complete makeover of that playground area uh, and we were talking about it um, in the context of, of what we could apply to the CPC for. Um, yep. So let's let, let's make sure that we're all on the same page on what we're applying for and what we're not and what the timing is on, on all of that. Yeah, let's, we'll add that to our agenda for tomorrow morning. Okay. Um, so the, um, the public meeting was held by the, uh, the Veterans Committee that, that I was working on the, the park redesign there. Um, and we sent notices to abutters, uh, it was on the website. Um, do we put it in the scoop? I think we put it in the scoop to let people know about it. Um, and, um, we had the whole group that was working on it, plus Adelia that came. Um, so we didn't really get much public feedback. Um, so we, we provided the opportunity for, if folks wanted to say something. If they still want to provide comments on it, um, they can feel free to email me um, and I'll pass those along to the committee. Um, so that's about all that I have. Um, I think it might be worthwhile, Fred, if we want to talk a little bit about the next two meeting dates. Okay, we've got our next regular meeting is would be April uh, 14th, two weeks. And, and then the one after that, if we stick to that schedule, is the, is the 28th of April. 
And and I guess I proposed a while ago that we uh, move that meeting to April 26th, which is our incorporation date for the town. We have some kind of program for the incorporation celebration, a birthday celebration, whatever you want to call it. And then uh, we can conduct our, our regular board meeting after that, rather than meeting two days afterwards. And, um, and, and my, my th thought on, on that meeting on, if we do agree on the 26th is to have a, a short agenda, uh, which would be more than, more than just reading the proclamation. I, I guess we're expecting to get a governor's proclamation designated that day as Whateley Day or Whateley Incorporation Day. And also our representatives, uh, the House and, Sen and Senate have, have, are working on, I guess, a citation to maybe present to the, to the town on that date. Uh, and my thought was for, for at least the two representatives to, to present that. I, I don't think the governor is gonna be on our, our meeting but, uh, or his assistant, but somebody would read them proclamations and then, and then uh, have some kind of uh, presentations. You know, I made a, a proposal uh, of things that we could talk about. Uh, one would, of course, be the, the, the parade, a summary of the, of the parade that happened two days ago, a, a video of it. Uh, I think that's going to be videoed by FCAT. And, you know, that may be uh, two to five minutes to do the whole parade, uh, present that for people that weren't home or didn't see it that day. Uh, and then also towards the end, they have the, the 250th committee discuss briefly what they're planning on for the next uh, year for our celebration. And I guess I, I presented some ideas what we could fill in in between. Uh, and, and I think, you know, it, it's important that, that we, do, we do something on that day. That's our incorporation day. It's 50 years since the last time we had a celebration. And, and I think there's significance to doing it on that day. I don't know exactly what the 250th committee is, is planning other than, well, in general, some, some ideas of what they're, they're doing as far as community events and whatever, but I think this would, would be a more of a, a, a town government or town office celebration or, or presentation of where, where the town is in, in 50 years. Uh, and a few, you know, I, I haven't presented it to, to anybody. I talked, mentioned to, I guess, the, the, uh, the 250 committee and, and the parade committee that, you know, we'd like to have them make a presentation on that day. Uh, but beyond that, I haven't invited anybody else to speak or do anything because I guess I needed some assurance we were going to do one something that day and we were going to do something more than read a proclamation. Uh, I think it's an opportunity for us to, to do something, to show how important what, what's going on in the town, what activities we've had in the past and maybe a, a, a brief perspective of where we go from, from here. And it may be an opportunity for you know, some of our town boards to present something. We haven't had a meeting other than with, I guess, finance or town boards have their own meetings, but uh, as, a, as a government agency as a whole to present something, what our town boards are doing. Where have we been in the last 50 years? What have we done? And where do we think we're gonna go in the future? And, and I guess I, I think that day is, is important to do it. Otherwise, you're just picking any other day of, of the year to, to talk about that. You know, that's an option, I guess, we can schedule later on if we wanted to do more than, a, a, say, an hour of presentation on that day. And, uh, but 
I, I don't know how that fits in with the two fiftieth committee, what they're planning during the during the year, or or other town groups could be planning stuff either. So that's 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 my my thoughts. I I, I just feel strong that we need to do something on that day. And and the other reason I, I guess I bring it up now is maybe Joyce will correct me on this. I understand there's a special edition of the scoop coming out, uh, what, April 4th or 5th or whatever. So mm -hmm. if we were to decide on something, uh, you know, we could, we could advertise it in the scoop. Uh, we may not know if we're, we're talking specific presenters, we may not know in the next two days who's willing to, to speak or not. So we can't be that specific, but at least to, to advertise what we plan on doing on that day, uh, because the 250th committee has kind of asked me, what are you doing on that day? And they kind of mentioned, you know, we're having a special scoop article, scoop edition, that you could say something on. So that, and of course, FCAT and whoever else would pick up and, and help us promote that, that day for Waitley. My thought, Fred, is that I don't think we should be, I don't think it's an opportunity to talk about what's happening in the town today because, you know, we're going to have town meeting in a couple of months. And, and I think that town meeting is the, is the planning stage for where are we going over the next year? And, you know, people talk about, well, we need X, Y, and Z. But I mean, I do like the thought of, <clears throat> you know, maybe comparing agendas, you know, we'll look at our agenda for, for this current, for the, for the 26th, and then look at <clears throat> the equivalent agenda for the select board 50 years ago on April 26th or whatever that closest date was. And then a hundred years ago, we find that agenda so that we can, we can see the evolution of, of what pressing issues are being discussed in a 50 year or hundred year iterative, iterative process. Um, but to talk about just what we're doing in town today, um, I, I'm I'm just not sure that's the. We should be celebrating our history, not talking about where we are today in this venue. I, I mean, letting people know what we're doing and then comparing it to 50 years ago, 100 years ago, and if you can find a document 150 years ago, great. That's kind of cool, I think. But but you know. I, that, that's as far as I would take it because I think people's eyes will, will glaze over because again, town meetings in, in two months. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Maybe you, you said it better than I did, Jonathan, but yeah, I, I agree with what, with what you're saying to look and see how what we've done in the last 50 years or 100 years. A lot of that is, is readily available. And if we ask town boards to come up with that, you know, one or two slides that they should be able to do that rather quickly. And as far as for town meeting, lately we had 28 articles. We don't have much time to talk about anything other than the articles on the agenda. Uh, I don't think town meeting gets really at, at looking at where we've been and, and what we've accomplished. It's looking ahead to fund future. I Yeah, I, I, I guess, you know, I think, I think the group, that would best do what you're trying to accomplish is not the individual town committees, but it would be the historical society to, to, to dig into what was happening 50 years ago in April of, of 1971, what was happening in, in April of 1921. That would be the really cool one actually, because it would be post Spanish flu. Um, so you could, you could, you could, you could look at, at, at what they were doing in response to, 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 um, Mm -hmm. to the 1918 pandemic that, that would be actually find that i think people would find that very interesting um i i'm just not convinced that people want to what did we do it at, at summer camp over the past 50 years granular yeah okay well i, I don't know what historic society is planning on doing i, yeah. I haven't we could ask them we could ask them what their capacity is to find out what was happening in April of 1971, April of 1921. Again, I, I, I just thought of it as we were talking. The pandemic comparisons might be kind of interesting. I don't know. What do we do to respond to the influenza pandemic of, of, of you know, 1918 through 1920? I don't know. 
Well, mm -hmm. I know they have all the newspaper articles go back to at least uh, 71, 1971. Beyond that, I, I don't know how far they go, but. They have a lot of cool stuff we could ask. Well, yeah. I guess what we need to decide is about what we're doing with our meeting. Right. And I guess I hesitate to put the burden on volunteer committees, volunteer boards, and are already um, kind of, uh, oh, well, I, I'll say overtaxed in this busy season of budgets and everything that's going on. I hesitate to ask our town employees to come up with a presentation that's going to be just at a board of selectmen meeting. No idea what audience would be. Um, I, I, I feel like coming up with an hour long presentation regarding a, a topic that's sort of um, not very narrowly defined. Um, I, I, I hesitate to put that burden on folks to do that. And I would say we should do something, but we shouldn't be aiming for an hour. We should be aiming for something much shorter. I don't know, 15 or 20 minutes. I think having proclamations read is great. That's sort of like the, the, the headline. Um, and then with the 200, maybe you can go straight to the 250th committee so they can give a preview of what's planned at the moment. Um, I don't think the 250th committee is demanding of us that we do something at this meeting. Okay, that's, that's not, they, you know, it's, they're, they're not a demanding group at all. Um, they're happy to help us promote whatever we wanna do. And I think we should keep it small because at the same time, we have a lot of business to take care of during our meetings. And this meeting has already gone two and a half hours. I can't imagine what would happen if we had put a one hour presentation um, that a lot of people wouldn't have enough time to put together anyway. I, I, I just sort of feel like a lot of what you're saying is stuff that probably a uh, historical society could take charge of if they wanted to. We don't get to charge the historical society with doing stuff for us, yeah. but they, I know they are planning to do things um, in coordination with Waitley 250th. And I'd say, let them do it on their time scale. Um, I, I, I just, I don't want to put a lot of, like, I don't think we are people who produce good presentations necessarily. We do the nitty gritty of small town government. And I, 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 I just think we shouldn't like inflate our hopes for um, making a big presentation here. And I understand kind of wanting to, there's a nostalgia for the date and everything, but um, I, I think keeping it small, you know, if, if somebody among us, not a town employee, could come up with those three agendas from 2021, 1971, and 1921, that would take five minutes. Right. And that might be interesting, but I don't want to, I, I don't think we should be aiming for an hour long report from all kinds of boards about our history. That's just is my own feeling. I, I, I kind of agree with Joyce. I mean, I, I you know, I like my ideas because they're my ideas and whether they're good or not is not, you know, I don't know. But, you know, just having a, a, a retrospective on the, the, you know, 50 years ago and 100 years ago, amazing similarities or look how far we've come. People can draw their own conclusions. Um, and... And, 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 and that's it. And I'm happy to ask the Historical Society what they could dig up, um, no pun intended, for, for, for that type of a, <clears throat> of a retrospective. Yeah. But I don't think we should be calling them into the Board of Selectmen to do that. I think I, they should do that on their own time scale with the Waitley 250. That, I mean, the, and Waitley 250 has been thinking about it, putting things off because of the pandemic. Right. And so there's, yeah, I don't know that you're not, I don't think you're suggesting we call them in and, and make them do this either, but no. I just want to just be really clear. I, that, I'm suggesting, sorry, go ahead. No, I, I, I'm suggesting that we, we make a request, Hey, what can you come up with so that we can give five minutes of, 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 of again, 50 years, a hundred years, whatever, whatever it is. And if they can, great. If they can't come up with anything, that's fine too. 
But well, I'm not asking them to, to come in and present right. and be a part of it. No, because they're going to do that with the 250th. And yeah. we've, we've historically, no pun intended again, let these guys do what they want to do at their own pace and their own schedule. And they're doing a great job. Um, mm-hmm. I don't want to muddy those waters. I, I, I agree with Fred that we should commemorate that, you know, April 26th, 1771 or whatever the date is. Um, mm-hmm you know, it has some significance and relevance and we're looking forward to celebrating the last 250 years over the next year. Um, and here's a, an example of what's happened over the past, you know, a hundred years or whatever it is and leave it at that. Okay. Again, I think people will find it interesting, but if we, if we go too long, people are going to tune it out. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll try to find out what happened uh, at our meetings 50 years ago, I think I can do that easily at home. I'm not sure about 100 years ago, see what the agendas or what come up as as topics of discussion back then. So I can can do that. Okay, but first off, okay, are we deciding the 26th, April 26th will be our meeting? I think that's a good idea. Move it to Monday for that one week. Okay, and what we're gonna do is, uh, is uh, on that day, uh, we'll read the proclamations, decide uh, who's available and what, what we're, who's going to read them. Uh, I would still like to have John talk about the, the parade that went through town. And, and then uh, I'll see what I come up with for articles of uh, town meetings 50 and 100 years ago. And, and then I guess give uh, Susan an opportunity to, to talk if she wants about future activities and let it, let it go with that. Is that kind of agreeable? I think that sounds reasonable. And that sounds like it will take 15 or 20 minutes at the beginning of a meeting. And it, right, okay. And a, a much more reasonable time scale, I think. Okay, and are my dates correct for the special scoop? Is that, is, well, first, is that happening? Um, I haven't gotten copy yet from Susan, but I think um, uh, I'll be hearing from her soon. Um, so Susan Barron, she's putting it together. I'm not right. putting it together. She's putting it together and I'm doing the, the mailing part. So <coughs> uh, that you, you don't ask me more detailed questions because I don't know when she's going to get me the copy. But I, I understand the aim is for early in April. Oh, okay. so I expect it will be soon. Okay, so you want something from me or the board? Or is it right up? For you me? send it There's to Susan it. Barron. Yep. Okay. Don't send it to me. <laughs> send it to Susan Barron. She's putting Susan, it together. Okay. okay, I'll come up with something with maybe Brian to help me edit it. So, or Amy. Yep. So, uh, okay. Well, that's why I was thought there was a crunch time here at the end of the month. But okay, we have time to look at that. So, okay. Thank you for the input. Oh, and and I don't know if everybody knows that. Well, I think Brian told Hatfield that we will participate in their parade. Well, and, and in Waitley's parade here, that the uh, select board will be on a float that uh, the okay. town that will be making for us to ride on, and the same float hopefully will be available for the Hatfield parade. So uh, that's in. Uh, I guess early planning development stages. So, okay. Hopefully, that will- liability waivers for you guys to sign. Oh, thanks. Oh, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> okay. Are there we covered under town liability? Or on du- are we on duty? Would we call on duty? No, that's we, just, we just close our eyes and hope nothing bad happens. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. They're, All right. they're the drivers. So, okay. Anything else? Anybody else have anything to talk about? Not me. Can I make a motion to adjourn then? Oh, yes. Okay. Uh, roll call vote, Joyce? Aye. Jonathan? Yep. Right, yes.